Today on Moon Talk, South Korea, and FOMO, FLOMO, and MO. How do they interfere with your life? We'll discover this and more in your centralized place to get your decentralized currency. This is Moon Talk. Market cap, according to Coin Market Cap, at the time of recording, are Bitcoin at thirteen thousand four hundred ninety-five dollars and twenty cents, Ethereum at one thousand three hundred twenty-five dollars and ninety-seven cents, Ripple at one dollar and eighty-three cents, Bitcoin Cash at two thousand five hundred thirty-four dollars and one cent, Cardano at seventy-six point four cents, Litecoin at two hundred thirty-nine dollars and fifteen cents, NEM at one dollar and thirty-four cents, Stellar at sixty-one point seven cents, IOTA at three dollars and sixty-eight cents, and Neo at one hundred fifty-five dollars and seventy-two cents. Yo, so <laughs> <laughs> say it. Say it. <laughs> talk about it my black folio has been out of commission over this past <laughs> yeah. week do go on and i just want to just like admit it to everybody i deleted black folio and then quickly realized that when you install it back like after you know you have fomo for two days mm -hmm. it deletes all of your holds and i just didn't feel yeah, like putting all yeah. that back in there oh so i was just like yeah, i've been like delete your data man yeah you i don't just, have like, anything block your access to it it's not like facebook so the only thing that i truly know is where my race is all right so wait 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 <laughs> when you're when you delete your block folio like do you do you sync it with like your bitrix or do you just say like i have 71 neo so show me what 71 neo means um i just don't know any of that <laughs> like <laughs> unless you you want to like Bitrix or yeah, something. Yeah, like I, I you know I was smart about moving, you know, my my real gains into my wallets, mm. like on my desktop. True. Nice. But you know, it's I'm just kinda going blind. You know, I decided <laughs> it was really therapeutic to just kinda not know for a little bit. You're like the yeah. Stevie Wonder of crypto right now. <laughs> 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 was it in result of the big dip or what? Honestly, it was almost uh, right before the big dip. It was like in okay. that. It was right in that early stages, and I just was like, I don't need to know. You know? I, dude, I'm like. So it didn't bug you? No, not <laughs> even really. Here's what's crazy Ooh. is I'm hearing the most from people texting me, mm -hmm. and like you guys, you know, like I hear, yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of hear what's going <laughs> on, and I'm kind of like, oh, really? You, that's you know, happening? Like, like that's like how I've done a lot of my like. Uh, oh, I'm gonna make this trade is just like you guys are talking about Ripple, and I'm like, that is an interesting coin. So, that's true. Honestly, respect my friend. That I like my esteem for you definitely went up because you like it. Just shows that you have a little restraint. Like, no, like, ask me if I miss it. How you feeling? Ugh. Do you miss it? Oh, yeah, you just <laughs> been sitting on your phone swiping back and forth. I watch you. Here's the thing. I don't know <laughs> if people out there have iPhones or not, but have you ever done the thing where you're just you go to your home screen and then you just kind of swipe back and forth? Oh yeah. It's almost like <laughs> you're looking for an app. Uh -huh. And in my case, I was looking for a block folio. But, <laughs> oh, no. It's like a subconscious. But it was like, there. oh, I don't even know what I'm on here for, but for some reason I can't find it. <laughs> I must stay here. And then like 45 minutes goes by and your thumb's tired and you're like, maybe I'd read a book. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, why aren't you engaging with me? You know, I, I will don't know. <laughs> I will say this, and this this is a direct this is my predicament is a direct uh um, convergence of me having Ripple XRP and me Ooh. enjoying a certain porn website that starts with an X. But oh. every time that I type an X, like, depending on what I'm, you know, on my phone to do, I'll, like, you know, be, like, ready to go, and then I'll see the Ripple price and be like, that is exactly not what I wanted to see. <laughs> and especially because, like, okay, Ripple's up two cents, but not at all what I was going for. I've gone online to look for porn and ended up looking at cryptocurrency instead because it was, like, more so interesting. Much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just wasn't doing it for me anymore. <laughs> Ripple is the new smut. It was like, it was like that meme... Uh, I saw it, it was a while ago, but it was like a dude wearing a VR headset having sex with a woman, and you see what he's seeing is just like crypto charts and like yeah. bit, it's like news, like Bitcoin from one thousand to ten thousand. Like. I mean, what's cool to think about is how is crypto going to affect the porn industry? You know, it's like you know there are I I mean in that book we've been reading the cryptocurrency compendium, um, it's uh <laughs> they they talk about that there's. There's, I think there's something like boob coin 
Boob coin. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, and honestly though, because like a lot of those cam sites, um, work off at of tipping, and uh, I think some of them have moved into using cryptocurrency. And when I'm on, like, you know, there are people online who will take cryptocurrency, uh, especially on Reddit. People who will send you pictures, and and I think it's actually it can add to more agency for the performers because a lot of times in those cam sites. Um, the girls are getting fucked over. The performers are getting fucked over because um, they're really not seeing most of those right. profits. Yeah. And um, but now with cryptocurrency, I've seen so many people who will just put up their be like, here you can um, nav. You can you could yeah nav pay or they just like have their Bitcoin address or their, their Ethereum address and you can um, send them you know currency that way. And you know, and not to mention like basic attention tokens, things like that. Right, like yeah. you know, mm-hmm. if you're if you're watching porn, you know, because eventually the blockchain will know. And, and sure. yeah, and so and that's I mean, that's a real issue is that porn you can get porn for free online now, but you know it costs money, and these performers are doing work, and these people, but like you know, on the back end are doing work, and people are filming <laughs> it. It's like a whole industry, but it's like, oh no, that should all be free. Right. Because it's porn. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe, you know, maybe cryptocurrency will allow us to start to, and I mean, I'm not. No, and because you want to pay, pay you want to pay people for the services. If yeah, they're doing, that's true. if they're doing work, you need to be able to pay them. Or you need I mean, to it's pay like them. the same thing with music. You know, people, you know, you can get music for free or you can pay for it. But, yeah. you know. You know, I, I was just listening to something where they were talking about um, Napster. Uh, like what Napster did in 1998 times like uh spotify so like napster was like the lock that opened up the door but as like an actual software napster totally fucking sucked and that's why we don't ever listen to Mm. napster nowadays but it allowed spotify to become a thing that every you know everybody uses and they got their own yeah you know that's true but like somebody was comparing what's happening right now in cryptocurrency to it's Napster. This right now is just showing what the limit can be. And a courtroom in like the next five years will figure out like, yes, this is allowable. No, this other shit like we'll, you know, like we're going to have Lars Ulrich be like, no, I want my money. But yeah. this is going to open the door for like that idea of money or currency to, you know, like perspire. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everything's going to be a micropayment, you know? Mm-hmm. You're going to be basically surfing the entire internet and just paying people all these micropayments, you know, as you visit websites. Which is nice. Like, think about, like, when you're driving and you're listening to, like, you're just going through your radio stations. Like, Rush Limbaugh's in the mix, and you could get caught on Rush Limbaugh because he said one thing that you're interested in. Yeah. But you're not actually micropaying him. You're just, like, you're stuck in not. that, you know, like that model of like oh i have to listen to him where like maybe 10 years from now micropayments will be like no i don't ever want to see any of my time or my money go to rush limbaugh because i'm micropaying you know like yeah. i don't know create a nice safe bubble for yourself hey, yes but exactly <laughs> so i don't have to talk to anybody the whole world like. will be like facebook <laughs> but we gotta watch out for um the the silos you know like we gotta watch out for the internet turning into just hearing what you want to hear. Exactly. Totally. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Obama Chambers. just warned us on that I know. Uh, David Letterman thing. Have you seen that? No. No, I didn't. Yeah, it's on Netflix. Which Shout is, out. I saw that. Wait, I Obama's on, on Netflix? Netflix? Yeah, Obama's on Netflix. Yeah. He's got a new interview. David interviews. Letterman has that big old Santa Claus beard. Yes. It's well, like, wild. why not? Dude, dude 40 years. He looks years. like he lives in Portland now. How are, how are you guys doing with your uh, race? <laughs> Woo! I'll start. Um, <laughs> okay. I invested in Potcoin. Q bong rip. I bought at 38 cents, and today I'm at a whopping 32 cents. I am down. I have lost money. This is karma for me making, you know, what I did with uh, Ripple, which now I technically, everything's down. I think you might still be winning. Uh, no, actually, no. I'm, I'm not. We'll it's, see. it's down. Ripple right now is one eighty. So, oh, so are you talking about is, the ten dollars? Yeah. The question is with ten dollars, how much did your ten dollars worth turn into? Um, I need a calculator. <laughs> um, see? <laughs> see, no fucking, see. Oh no, no, no. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do mental math. Thirty five times point three two. This is gonna be hilarious. Okay. You could also go just slow on your black phone. Carry the one percentage. Seven and then mm-hmm. <laughs> Check that out. No, it's zero. So what are you at? Okay, so I 
bought Sia coin. And uh, because of that thing we were talking about last week, I couldn't actually just get $10 worth, so I bought $30 worth. But there's this great thing on Blockfolio where if you go into Sia Coin and you click on your holdings and you see your buy, and since I've only made one buy, um, it shows that that buy has gone down overall 27%. <laughs> oh. So that would mean that uh, I lost $2.70 so far of my $10. Um, which puts me at what uh, seven dollars and thirty cents. <laughs> so um, not going great. Also, yeah. I haven't tried to sell this yet because you know you try not to sell at a loss. But if we're racing, I might need to move out of it and try to get on something that might move. Okay. But my worry now is that I don't even have enough see a coin to sell. <laughs> 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 I haven't tried yet, and that's what I was worried about. But it's um, time to go black market. I was wondering if anyone's <laughs> playing around long at home and how it's going for them. So. Uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. Down twenty seven percent. Well, I baby. just I just tabulated. I my ten dollars is now seven point nine dollars. Hey, so seven dollars ninety cents. I'm down, baby. Down, yeah, baby. I mean, down. okay. So I'm in basic attention token, mm -hmm. right? And right now that is down six point five percent. Oh, so I'm also down, but I am at nine dollars. Yeah. So you're winning. So Batman is in the lead. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're only down seven percent. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Nice. Is, so that's seventy cents. Yeah. Down. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Great. So you're in the lead. Congrats. Yeah. And basic attention token is doing really well. <laughs> in um, the lead with a loss. <laughs> in the lead with a loss. It's hilarious that this is actually ten dollars to zero dollars. The <laughs> ten dollars to zero dollars. Oh well, I'm in the lead well, then. We, you take it down to the perfect coin, the one Satoshi coin. Yeah. We we, we had to do this thought experiment. If you can find the one Satoshi coin, that's the best bet, right? Because can it. But could a coin go from one Satoshi to zero Satoshi? Is uh, that binary. Um, could it could it just go to nothing? Could a coin become worth absolutely. nothing? Absolutely. Isn't that a Rick and Morty episode? Anyways, <laughs> if you find that one Satoshi coin, though, the math is that if you buy it, you will double your money when it goes to two Satoshis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you just double your money, the perfect coin at one Satoshi. So um, I love that it's – easier for us to make a thousand dollars off of the hundred dollar game than to make a hundred dollars off the ten dollar game but that's well, how we'll generational see. wealth works Ooh, fair enough interesting. the more you have the more you can make yes fair enough cheers um south korean bump let's uh oh my god uh, I'll, I'll just start because every the time great dip every time <laughs> the great dip I look at XRP. <laughs> I just cry a little inside because it was like 360 at one point, oh, and uh, like right now it's at uh, one dollar and eighty three cents. And I'm like, you know, I'm only up if... like a million percent. <laughs> no, but it's, it's like the the FOMO that I had of selling a portion of it yeah. is just like getting the best of me. Oh yeah. And my whole like my whole week has literally just been like, how do I go Zen and just like accept the except what i've already lost well you know, there's zen coin there's zen coin and zen coin is doing really well is that an actual coin yes it is it's the if, coin if not it's preferred gold, by like the whatever. here's the crazy thing about zen is i bought zen when it forked off of zcash so this is like right oh, this yeah. is like way back in the olden days of crypto yeah. 2017 when electricity <laughs> and um <laughs> i remember crypto bam talking about zen and he was like oh get ready for zen get ready for zen and i was like you know what I respect a coin that can name itself Zen coin. Yeah. True. And so I bought like three of them and it was uh, really, really cheap. I remember like it being really cheap. I, honestly, I remember it being like $6. I can't remember what the actual coin price. Is it now? But now Zen coin. Yeah. Check your black folio hashtag. Check I'm like, everyone's like reaching folio. for their phone. Like, oh, <laughs> I'll find it. <laughs> Where you at, Zen? Zen, $53. Yeah. Word. 53. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, I was so kind if of I wondering. Held, I sold it like right away. Honestly, I didn't make any money off of Zen, but I wish I had held it because I, I remember um, being really impressed with Zen. It's a good. But hold. speaking of Zen, I just want to say, in terms of this bump, I felt super Zen about that fucking dip, man. I was like, I watched my shit go down. I had just made a bunch of money off of Mana, and I just watched like the dollar value disappear. Mm -hmm. yeah. And with like Bitcoin falling and everything, my Bitcoin value didn't really take too much of a hit on the way down which True. was interesting um because i'm not holding much bitcoin i mean that also wouldn't make it go down either <laughs> but uh, anyways i mean it just um 
everything kind of held. It was interesting to see Nav hold. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nav held its position pretty well and then had a nice resurgence. Everything everything came back as far as, I mean, everything I was holding came back. And um, not to where it was, you know, it was a correction, but it was a deep correction. I'm wondering about this South Korea shit, though. Like, so it was, you told me. Monday that, morning. Yeah, so we, we all started, I mean, I saw it as the crypto market started crashing. Like, what's going on? Yeah, and we yeah. were all sitting around, I remember, and we looked into it, and we were on the group chat, and someone mm -hmm. said something like South Korea. People were talking about it. And um, But, Phil, you're saying, like, CNBC basically said it was going to be illegal but that's not the case no, yes no, no, no. so they they reported some basic you know fear uncertainty and doubt on the actual news and that caused a lot of the new guys who are in this crypto space to lose their hats mm -hmm. and what's crazy about the last couple weeks in my opinion is not just the panic selling but the fear missing out you know oh. i mean it was like FOMO. it was like a panic selling going wild and then all of a sudden the coin started popping again in the last you know few days and everyone's like oh my god I lost take out. my money and it's crazy because you know what it reminds me of and it reminds me of <laughs> again you know last year this used to happen a lot remember when like bitcoin was going from like three thousand dollars to forty five hundred dollars and like and then uh, it went down to 99 yeah 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 remember when when everything was moving i mean i remember the whole the days when uh, Ether was moving from like 150 to 300 dollars, and it used to go back up and down, oh, up God. and down, up yeah. and down. And you know, we were new guys at the time, and we were doing that the exact same thing. Totally. I was we would buy up. coins at three, Fucking 300 and like up. 40 dollars when the high was 338 dollars. You know, I mean, and we would. See, you got it. You have to. The thing is, you're gonna ha you're gonna have to take some hits along the way. Like, yeah. no lie, I took so many hits <laughs> on the first days. I mean, it was like, fuck, why did I? I'm like, oh, I gotta get in now. Like, it's never now. But it's long term holding. I it's would yeah. long term <laughs> hold. You have buy to buy high, sell low. You have to sink your teeth into this and like. Unless you're pumping and dumping, you've got to just accept the fact like these things are going to – it's like a ski slope. Yeah. You know? If you go up, you're going to go down, to, and that's the joy of it. Had, like, exactly. Not FOMO, but JOMO. Like yeah. you have to adapt. You know, when the, you have to be comfortable with your gains. Oh, the reason it went down so hard was because South Korean uh, currencies were taken off of coin market cap, which is like number one when you look up prices on uh, Google. And oh. the reason they got taken down was because the South Korean um, investment portfolios were claiming that, like, you know, like Bitcoin right now is at 13,541, but the South Korean exchanges would have it at like 15. You know, they would just be like way above the actual. Like Coinbase. <laughs> like, like Coinbase. Well, uh, no, even worse. What like, makes something a South Korean coin, though? Well, it's just the exchange. It's just South Korean exchange. Like BitThumb right. is a South Korean exchange. Oh, okay. Oh, word, and so word, like word. if it's thirteen five now, they'll just say it's like fourteen two because they can. I mean, they they can inflate the price technically. That yeah. doesn't mean that it's actually at that, but it means that that's what they're um, that's where they're placing their uh, evaluation of the currency. Yeah. So coin market cap after you know what this has been going on for a year. Yeah. And so after a year, Coin Market Cap was like, you know, we're not gonna put up with this. If you're gonna if you're gonna inflate your prices, we're just gonna take them out. The dumb thing was they didn't tell anybody. And now like because of that, they didn't make an announcement. Mm. Everyone saw it that morning, freaked out and panic sold. Yeah. And now we are where we're at, like, you know what, nine days later? Yeah. It's dumb coin market cap. Y'all and I don't like it. I don't like you, but I'm going to keep going on your site because I have an addiction. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we like to talk about at Moon Talk is addiction. Addiction. If you're addicted <laughs> to <laughs> cryptocurrencies, delete yeah. your block folio like I did. Seriously. Seriously. And now it's time for Hero Coin. We're talking about FOMO. Now, FOMO is something that came out in the markets real hard this week, and it's even affected some in the cast and crew of Moon Talk. So my question for the universe is, how will FOMO affect the average cryptocurrency investor, both financially and emotionally? Will it be the end of us? Will it actually keep the markets flowing? How will FOMO affect us? Interesting. So the card I pulled is the inverted Eight of Cups. 
Let me describe this card to you. We have a full moon peeking out from a crescent. We have a wanderer clad in a red cape and red boots. And he's walking away from his eight stacked golden cups, which we have in the foreground. Now, these eight stacked cups represent all of the wealth that he has transpired over his lifetime. Or her lifetime. We can't tell the sex of this traveler. Now, this isn't a copious amount of wealth, but it certainly is abundant. However, this traveler has decided to leave all of this wealth behind in search for better hopes. Traveling over a rocky terrain, through a rushing river, something is on the horizon for their journey. What that is, only the moon can know. But let's not forget, this is inverted. So, while the Eight of Cups is a card that symbolizes a leaving of abundance in search for a more meaningful life, the inverted Eight of Cups symbolizes a departure from what was in order for something that should be more significant. Though is it? When it's inverted, the meaning of this card shifts from seeking out a higher truth to seeking out something more. It's an indicator of not being happy with the abundance that you have. And certainly an indicator of wanting more. This is a card of greed when it's inverted. As far as the question goes, how will FOMO affect the average cryptocurrency investor? FOMO being fear of missing out. We have to understand when reading this card that the average cryptocurrency investor sees what they have as abundance. I mean, anything that we've made thus far has grown tremendously. And FOMO, the fear of missing out, the want to sell all of your ripples so that you can get into XEM because that's going to go up, you know, 2% and you can make up that money and then sell it. All of that, that's a longing for overabundance. Now, this card, when it's not inverted, symbolizes an honest journey towards something better. But when it's inverted, it symbolizes foolishly walking away from a good thing. Eight golden cups isn't necessarily a bad thing, and neither is half a Bitcoin when it's where it's at. However, FOMO is going to be the mechanism that's going to see a lot of people walk away from eight stacks of gold. So how will FOMO affect us? Well, the inverted eight of cups says, beware of longing too hard for the moon. Don't forget about what you have. Be grateful for what you have. So saith the tarot coin. While we've already talked a lot about FOMO, the fear of missing out and you know what that did to the markets, I want to talk about Mo and Flomo. <laughs> what so, is Flomo? Who's Mo? So I'm going to start with Mo first, and then I'll get to Flomo, Phil. Mo is something that I believe Clifton, you coined. FOMO is the fear of missing out. And we dissected this and <laughs> discovered that FOMO can only exist in the past or present tense. For example, Ripple is going up to $71. God, I hope so. And I don't have any Ripple. I currently have a fear of not buying in. Mo is, I could have bought Ripple at $2, and now it's at $71. I missed out. You just missed out. Mo is the past just tense of out. FOMO. Like, you can't have FOMO on something that... If Ripple's at $71, you missed out. You missed out. You, missed you out. have Mo. You don't have FOMO, you have Mo. Right. And you can't say, oh, I got FOMO. No, you, you just missed out. It's like the 70s definition. Like, you don't have it. Yeah. Didn't <laughs> buy Xerox on time. It's like all of us with Bitcoin. Yeah. Like all of us with Bitcoin. We just missed yeah. out. No. Yeah. But that's why you find the ones that you don't miss out on. So and don't 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 be scared. Don't be scared. It's just FOMO, and it's just Mo. So let me get to FLOMO. This FOMO. is something that I have been thinking about a lot about, and FLOMO 
is what we all as a cryptocurrency community need to adopt in place of FOMO. So uh, a long time ago, uh, a really smart mentor of mine told me that the only reason that your dollar is worth anything is because of that trust. We all agree that this dollar will buy one Sprite. That is the trust that drives this to have meaning. Otherwise, it's a piece of paper that you can eat but won't actually give you nutrients. Yada, yada, yada. The thing with Flomo is that we as a cryptocurrency community, you, Clifton, me, my girlfriend, all of my girlfriend's family and friends and everybody else who's a part of this has to get over that existential feeling of FOMO and just stay put. The Ripple market is a perfect explanation of that because Ripple went down because bad business and not communicating and then fear of missing out and then wanting not to see all your wealth go down the toilet. So what's and the L stand for? The, f the flow and, f well, it's just flow with mo. Oh. Flow is you everyone. Flow with, just flow with missing out. Flow is everyone needs to flow on the exact same wavelength. Right now, okay. you're down. If you own Ripple, you're down. But that's not the end of the world. You have to understand that along with the downs come the ups. It's look look back at the Bitcoin uh, market chart and you will see FOMO. It's gone up, it's gone down, there have been tears and cheers along the way, but you have to understand <laughs> that if you want to be a part of this, you have to incur the ups as well as the downs. It, it takes the good to realize, or it takes the bad to realize how good the good can be. Everyone needs to get on FOMO and get rid of FOMO, because if we have FOMO, we're just going to outsell all of our stuff until Chase Bank and all these other whales own, you know, 90% of the currency and they can manipulate yeah. it how they want. Yeah. FOMO is the only thing that's going to take the, the cryptocurrency. Like, we are in this because this is our only advantage against the banks and the giant <laughs> hedge funds. This is our power. And FOMO will get us straight to where we were in 2008. FOMO, if we all adopt that, will get us to where we actually have a stake in our future. Right. The 99%. And you know, like, when I wake up and I look at my block folio and I see it's way down, or like it was down when I went to bed and it's still down, it's like when you wake up that first morning after you broke up with somebody or mm -hmm. you just got broken up with them and be like, oh, yeah. That's what this kind of day is. <laughs> and then those days when you wake up and you rub your eyes and you check your block folio and you see a new number, a higher number before that comma that you've seen before. And you think, what is this great bounty? <laughs> it's like Christmas morning, <laughs> you know? And uh, so, yeah, you got you to gotta get, get used to that. Just like you got to get used to that feeling of, Okay, well, that relationship is over, and now I'll move on with my life. Um, and get get used to the ups and downs, like you were saying. Flow, <laughs> flow with the mo. Get used to just looking at your eight golden Flowst, cups. I'm the flowst with the most. All of your wealth, and be okay with that. Like, if yeah. you've made any money off of Bitcoin in the past twelve months, guess what? You are a winner. If you have anybody in your family who has not, like mm -hmm. you, you financially <laughs> better than have them. One. You are better than them. <laughs> Eugenics and all so, that, yada yada yada. No, but seriously, like a good thing is a good thing. Don't waste it and don't pretend like you deserve more. Well, and here's the other thing is, especially if it doesn't have to do with your portfolio, mm -hmm. right? So if you hear that titanium coin went up 600 percent overnight Bitcoin. <laughs> then you need to like chill and mm. flow with your portfolio oh, yeah. you know what i mean well, if you're you not in titanium one. coin you didn't get those gains <laughs> you missed out yeah throwing your money at a 600 percent growth is a bad decision <laughs> stupid <laughs> stupid so and let's and Can that's how people why? get mad and that's how people lose their hands because all of a sudden then their money's way down and then they want to sell everything that's down so like, this is a scam. Can, can you explain why buying a 600 percent upswing like 
like with whales and all that to, to anybody who might have like you know sixty dollars and like ADA or whatever like why is that a bad idea uh I mean that's honestly cool like it's just it. here's the thing is uh, if you see something that's gone parabolic then you're too late you know it's just yeah. it's just that simple um if you're I don't know what kind of coin percentage growth you're trying to get but I mean most likely if it's gone up then it's going to correct back down because all of those people who bought that coin when it was very, very, very low are going to cash out and get their, their profits. I usually just assume that on every par- parabolic move, someone became a millionaire. And mm. I know that if I became a millionaire, I would cash out. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> sure. if, you know, yeah. like if I'm like, oh, you know, that little coin I bought five years ago just suddenly made me $5 million. I'm probably going to cash out on some of those millions so that yeah. I can live. <laughs> Hang on to that. And so if you're like, oh, man, I just made this great buy at $1.93, and, you know, you're not the one who became the millionaire and realized that. But you paid for them to be so, a yeah. millionaire. And so, you yeah. paid for them to be you're, a millionaire. You're paying – basically, we're creating a system where we're paying for other people to become millionaires. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the lottery just yeah. happening all the time. It's the lottery that's happening all the time. <laughs> and <laughs> that's what's fun. Mm-hmm. Everyone plays, everyone wins, right? Speaking of <laughs> playing and winning. <laughs> um, I was going to ask you guys, have you heard of DTube? DTube? D-tube. I heard you mention this the other day. Yeah, I'm learning about it. Um, I mean, to be honest, basic attention token has got me paying attention to what's going on <laughs> online. <laughs> and, uh, right there. <laughs> DTube is a platform um, similar to steam it so it is kind of like is a sister of steam it because it's kind of linked actually you can um, sign in through your steam it account mm-hmm. but um it's it's decentralized youtube and um oh. it's it's great it's a great it's a great little program for posting videos i mean it's in it's like early phases but mm-hmm. you know for posting videos and then getting paid basically commission for how many people watch it and like those videos okay um as opposed to the youtube model which is being paid for how many people are are acting with the advertisements on the video that you posted so um it kind of takes that that again that middleman out of there and it allows your videos that you post to be profitable to you and it's working on the blockchain so it's decentralized and it allows for you to profit off of your own content so you're not you're it's the same thing with basic attention token you know like it's allowing content creators to be more profitable with the things that they post so logan paul's gonna be on d2 in the next next 20 minutes (laughs) what's really interesting (laughs) about d2 from what i've uh been seeing about it is that people really like that it really does allow for freedom of speech in a way that youtube does not because with youtube you can be demonetized for, you know, a lot of different things, you know, like YouTube gets to decide what is valuable on YouTube, which makes sense. It's their business. They sure, deserve yeah. to be able to do that. Like you can't laugh uh, at people who kill themselves. Well, yeah. I mean, like if you see a video that has, uh, if you see a video that has a lot of cursing in it, that video is l- harder to find than a video that doesn't have cursing in it mm-hmm. because they want, you know, to spread positivity. Sure, yeah. Uh, on DTube, that's necess- not necessarily the truth. On DTube, it's about the interaction with the video. So if people really like a video on DTube, then that's the one that you see as far as the hot post or whatever, you know? And Does it so have any um, it allows for, for people to have a little bit more freedom of expression. People feel like they're less... Uh, people feel like they're, they're, they're less controlled on DTube, you know? Mm-hmm. And if they say something that's controversial... Uh, then they they can still be monetized, you know, mm-hmm. a, a, amongst their audience, and um, it's a great it's a great little platform for an example of where everything's headed, because you know eventually all the sites that you interact with will have some kind of integration for blockchain technology. Sure. And yeah. so I'm not just gonna say currency, but blockchain technology. So mm-hmm. you interacting with the website is saved on a ledger that. You know, in some way, credit you for interacting with the website or for posting on the website or whatever. And DTube is a great example of that. So definitely check out DTube if you haven't already. Um, and 
like and follow us on Steam and DTube so that we can, um, you know, continue to be content providers for you guys. Absolutely. Do you know if there's any um, censorship, like, like let's say someone goes on like some racist Trump rant, like, is there? Is it just like community enforced? Like, no, we're just gonna downvote this because we. All seven million of us are like, no, you're a racist. Or like, like snuff videos and shit. I mean, or like here's the thing: videos, is yeah. I imagine that in this world, you know, hopefully the community becomes the morality yeah, of that's this it. world. Completely, but popular. I, you know, who knows? I, I, I already know that with YouTube, you can post a lot of crazy stuff on YouTube. It doesn't mean that people are going to see it. You okay. know, yeah, I posted um, videos on YouTube that no one's seen. <laughs> you, you can post whatever you want to on YouTube, and people Except are going to either person. like it or not like it, or or you know, or YouTube gets to determine how many people um, are exposed to that video. So yeah. if, if YouTube doesn't like your video on YouTube, most likely, guys, YouTube is not showing your video to anybody. Sure, it's totally possible that your video is not getting seen by people, and that might be why you only have fifty-one views. Twitter but just came out today and said that on DTube, um, it's possible that people aren't seeing your video because they aren't used to interacting with you mm -hmm. or your content. But if your video is engaging or engaging enough to have people interacting with you, for instance, if you are a content creator who say controversial, but you have an audience, that's it's more not like going to that's not going to take away your the. The right. nature of your content is not going to be taken or, or downvoted by the server. Yeah, it's more like an right. upvoting, like how it works on Reddit or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's completely populist. It's like, decentralized. That's the point. And okay, so, yeah, yeah de definitely enough. check it out. Fair enough. Decentralized, like it. Decentralized tube. D tube. Uh, it word. sounds like a bad porn site. <laughs> it does. It's funny. The whole decentralized thing, it's like we're going back to like Bible days where like. It's what everybody in the town likes, not what Caesar says, you know? Like, we're just, we're just slowly going back to that, but in a more technological way. Um, <laughs> so I have been, you know, practicing my own version of numerology on these charts. Hit it. And have come up with a pyramid scheme. Well, no, just a pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And uh, so it's this thing where for a good amount of time, for several days this week, or maybe a day, that's more like, feels like several days in crypto time. We had Bitcoin at $14,000, Ethereum at $1,400, and NEO at $140. So you got the Bitcoin, which is Bitcoin. You got Ethereum, which is your bit dime. And you got Neo, which is your bit penny. And I think we can look at these triangles are very strong, you know. They're in when you're building something mechanically, triangles are strong. Epcot it's also the symbol of the Illuminati. Mm. So I think you should always pay attention when you see a pyramid within anything. You and you know, and it, this is not the first time I noticed this. When Bitcoin was at three thousand dollars. That's when Neo, or with when Ethereum, was around three hundred, and I noticed that at some point it really felt like Bitcoin and Ethereum were doing this like one tenth thing, um, and then you know Bitcoin shot up and kind of left Neo, Ethereum in the dust. But since that whole market thing happened, that, that was a huge gain for Bitcoin, and everything else has been taking a long time getting mixed around to try to get figure out where it needs to be and ethereum is now like a fourteen hundred dollar coin and this relationship is still like today when i was looking at it pretty close neo shot up a bit but um for a while it was like down to like like four places it was the same number it was like one four three two and it was moving around together and i i think that's something to watch for because I, within a monetary system it's good to have things that are divisions of each other you know it's just um makes it a bit easy it's scalability so you can you know something's worth a bitcoin or something's worth like a neo and um i think it's kind of cool because like you could say i'm gonna drop a dime on it you know and that's drop like four neo you know <laughs> you drop a dime on it is like dropping an ethereum it's like fourteen hundred dollars it's like whole fucking penny on this bitch 
like you know this night's gonna be good mm-hmm. I mean, whole neo i'm gonna you know, be serious the, I, I have cousins who are uh 14 and 11 and like already like they grew up and their idea of like legos was minecraft and like they you know <laughs> like you're working with kids and like they just uh um dab like just in the middle of a you conversation you should have seen what andy just did that was a very nice dab it was yeah it was beautiful uh, i've been practicing my angles but like these <laughs> kids are going to have a completely different frame of mind of like what a penny is worth or like i don't use pennies i use you know ne- neo because like that's the currency i grew up with yeah we're entering strange times people. do we really need pennies no that's been such a big argument well, for years they've been trying to get rid of the penny and the penny is just fucked man and it's all just because and when i went home to cleveland because you know <laughs> here in portland oregon no fucking sales tax, oh, which yeah. just means something that's a dollar is a fucking is dollar. dollar. And like, when I was home, in, oh, no, it was when I was on the East Coast. I was in like Maine and Massachusetts. I'm like, what the fuck? What seven percent? What is thirteen of what? Cents? It was a dollar oh seven. I was walking through the airports and I was like, why? I had more pennies than I'd ever had like in so long. It was like my pockets were just full of pennies and nickels because I, I was buying things with cash <laughs> here's a question what's more what's more valuable a penny or a satoshi well i'm gonna tell you this and i in mathematically the past, I it's since we've started the podcast i have had an actual need for pennies but not monetarily i my microphone stand has a li- they, they have two little notches for a screw <laughs> and the only way to unscrew it once it's really tight is with a penny it's a penny and that's the only that's reason i can i hold a bag of pennies i save my pennies mm-hmm. you know uh one well, time money. uh me and my sister read this article uh, about a guy who had been pay- saving pennies for a long time and took him to like a coin star or something at 14 mm. grand. Mm. And that's, you know, we were what? like, wow, it's a lot of pennies. 14, man. Grand, 14 grand in pennies? pennies. His Is basement like was full of pennies. Good Lord. Of pennies. It was like probably, it's like his basement. Like, I, you, should, you could do the math, but it's like, Jeez. that's a lot of fucking pennies. Yeah. And so we started saving weighed. pennies and she saved a bunch and I've got some. Um, I used to like give her my pennies for silver change so I could use it in the vending machine. Wow. Um and uh, yeah, it was good stuff. But I still have a bunch of pennies. I save them. At some point, we throw them in there. But like, I, I want to do the whole thing. You get that water jug, yeah, and you get oh, it yeah, full yeah. of fucking pennies. Because I like you could save your other change too. And for a while, I would do that where it's like, mm. but a Satoshi, you know, got to figure out your way to do that with crypto. Get the get you know the get the just get that that jar filled up. Maybe that's like you know your faucets and whatnot. Yeah, get your faucets flown into a jar. Well, I mean, I'm just so thankful that I don't have to haul pounds of pennies to Coinstar anymore because I use crypto. And they took 7% and, of it, you know. And that's, like, I want to pay with my cell phone everywhere I go for the rest of my life until they Thank drill a chip into my eyeball. for saying that. Because it's so much easier. It's, are you freaking kidding me? Like, I don't even want to, I don't, I want to blink at you and have you give me a shot and I pay for it. Like, can we have that universe? You know what's crazy to me, Donald honestly, Trump? is when people don't even use Cash App. I'm like, yeah. come on. Like, this is the world that we live in now. We transfer money with our cell phones. Let's stop playing around. We don't want your pennies. We I, just you know what the want... real talk is? We got to wait for that generation to die out. Because there's – I and I, look, I'm not ageist, okay? I am for however you per, however you perceive the world. I love you for who you are. But if you're going to say that something is stupid or, like, I can't do that, no, I just have to use the old way of doing something, like, sorry, but the world is changing. We don't use, like, wooden tokens for gas anymore because it's not World War II. Like, you got to get out of those barriers. And if you're not, well, you're just going to live a weird existence because the times are changing and they're not. you're not changing with them. So... Like, it's a give and take. You can't just be, you know, the old dog that sits on the porch anymore. You got to get get with the program. So Help us out. At the time of recording, the current price of one Satoshi is 13.5% of one cent. <laughs> <laughs> so can I, like, clip 13.5% of a penny and have Well, they do it with fucking Satoshi? gas. Yeah, but the right. question is, what's more valuable? So it's worth more. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. is it more valuable to hold that percentage of a Bitcoin right now, in your opinion? You know, that's a good question because that calls into question mm. what you think Bitcoin's about to do. Yeah. Because, sure. I mean, Bitcoin is 
you know, it shot to $20,000, and that was fucking dope. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Good, good for Bitcoin. But it is clunky old technology. Mm-hmm. And I think people got into it because they just started to hear about Bitcoin. It's been like – there's been Ooh. like a, an exponential push towards it. We were – you know, we're not early adopters. We're early-ish adopters. But, I mean, in terms of the whole scope of the thing, um, I mean, I'm, you know, just started in 2017. and uh, But people are starting to get into it within the last year. I feel like an old guy in the market for some reason. But it feels like there's been a really big surge around the, the, the holiday season. I feel like people were telling their family about it. People are getting into it. But once you finally get into it, that's, you know, it takes you a couple months to realize – there's a whole world of stuff going on and people are realizing what the technologies are. And um, so, you know, the flipping is a real thing. We're all wondering, is this going to happen? Where is Bitcoin going to take on over by something? Is Ethereum going to pop up there? Bitcoin Cash? What's going to happen? Because this is old technology. Here's, here's a fun little thought experiment. Uh, let's say like 2017 is where we started. In 2037 when like something be officially becomes an antique can you like sell your bitcoin that you held on to for more than what it's worth because like if you held if you held on to like you know a, a mint condition like radio for 20 years that's technically an antique you can take it to an antique store and get it for more than you know it's technical value a year ago will cryptocurrency do that well, well it's like, i mean this that's is a gold or that's, that's the gold thing right it's um I think it'll be. I don't think it'll be priced into the cr- the price of Bitcoin. Like Bitcoin's price will reflect not only that it has a huge you know adoption, but it also reflect that it is a Bitcoin. You know, it, it has a brand that is um, known for being um, the first, right, and the most yeah. important. Xerox. So yeah. It's 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 gonna have it's gonna have value just based on that. Now here's the question. In 40 years, when we're just using whatever coin, which probably has nothing to do with blockchain technology, <laughs> be like, blockchain. will Bitcoin mean anything? I'm going to be honest with you, probably not. I mean, I don't think speaking is going to mean anything by then. We'll just be telepathic. <laughs> but we'll still You'll be driving gas thoughts. cards on asphalt yeah. roads, yeah. I guarantee it. <laughs> or the bomb will have been dropped, and we're like straight back to like, I'll give you 20 wood for, you know, a gold. I'll give you How many sheep, sheep for that, that wheat? <laughs> yeah. we'll just Everyone's got sheep. I don't need any fucking sheep. <laughs> Um, I have one more thing to uh, bring up to you and the audience. Would you rather lose all the memory in your hands or lose all the memory in your feet? Let us know in the comments below. Or email us at moontalkpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you. (laughs) And that's a wrap on Moon Talk. (laughs) Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye. Moon Talk is meant for entertainment purposes only. This is not investment advice. Do your own research before you buy. <laughs>